I'm a small town urban explorer with a relatively large following on YouTube. I was wandering around the Rust Belt looking for something new and exciting. And although I was just passing through this shithole of a town, an old man caught my eye walking into the local bar. I figured it was late and might as well stop and catch a drink. Well, I typically start my research in the town bar, so I wasn't too surprised when that same old man that caught my eye waved me down when I walked in. Oh, I know you're a tight boy. You best steer clear of that damn yard, he said as soon as I walked over. Yard? I asked, shocked at his demeanor. Oh, I guess I best tell you as a warning, at least. Sit down with me, have a drink. I just promise you'll be gone by tomorrow. I agreed as he ordered us some whiskey. I was too interested now to walk away. Before long, he started his tale. Every town has its ghost story. Ours is the Scrap Demon. Story tells of the abandoned junkyard in the backwoods of town. Well, to sum it up, because at this point I can't quite remember it perfectly, oh, the owner of the junkyard went crazy after his son died. He wore metal around his face given it one horn, killed everyone who lived near the yard, dragging their bodies into the yard and posting warnings around town. Anyone who dare enter my yard will pay with their lives. Yeah, like every other town, we'll tell you our story is real, but we got proof. The houses are still vacant 30 years later, doors still kicked down, black stains in the rooms and in the halls. However, still those damn kids don't listen to us. I suppose that's what teens do. They ignore us and rebel. He took a long shot of whiskey, looking miserable at the mention of those kids. See, at the time I was captain of the police here, we go to the high school and warn the kids at the tail and tell them if we ever caught a glimpse of them going there, we'd toss them in the drunk tank. Well, apparently for the uh, troublesome five, this wasn't warning enough. They were the outcasts of the school always getting in trouble for fun, and nothing was below them. Oh, I can't tell you how many times I'd be calling in to deal with them. It was Emma. She were all black, didn't talk much. Jean, the leader, Lisa, the stoner. James, well, he was a good kid. Then there was Amy, that damn pyro. Oh. Before they all met, they were harmless. But good God, combined, they were hell on wheels. Anyways, they got it in their heads that they were going to go in and tag it, start a fire and camp out. Sadly, we didn't know any of them were gone until the next day when Amy showed up on the main street, passed out bleeding. He stopped here, wincing, as he took another shot. It took him some time to resume, but after a few minutes of silence, he did. Told us what happened in there. She described the fun time they had, spray painting the scrap art she said was everywhere. Nothing went wrong until after it got dark, she told us. Once only the fire illuminated them, well, Jean disappeared first to use the bathroom, but after 20 minutes passed, they started looking for him. They couldn't find him, so they returned to the fire thinking he was pranking them. Lisa apparently pulled out a joint at some point, sharing with everyone. Eventually, Lissa and Emma went to fool around, leaving Amy and James. Four minutes passed, and screaming could be heard. Amy and James ran to see Jean on a hook, hanging from a scrap tree. There he stood, the demon of Alyssa's headless body. Emma, shocked, frozen, turned to Amy before she was impaled by the horn of the demon. Amy and James bolted. They didn't get far before Amy got a makeshift sword in her leg. James pulled it out and told her to run. And well, the rest was a blur for her. Loud banging barbed wire. Sun rose. And she reached the town and passed out. He paused. Well, after she got home, she killed herself. Now, boy, I quit the force that day three years ago. Don't you step near that yard. I was shocked and interested. God, I wish I'd listened to that old man in that bar. But I wouldn't be writing this if I had. I entered the yard the next day. Apparently the cops never entered the yard to find the bodies because 
As soon as I'd entered, I saw a spine on a hook hanging from a tree made of twisted metal. It was massive. I saw the area where the kids had made the fire, and beside the fire was a chair. It looked harmless at first, until I saw there was a face in the leather. I dropped my camera and threw up. I stood up, walked over to the chair. Without thought, I heard my camera get crushed behind me, and I spun around. A few feet away stood a six-foot-six man. No, a mountain of a man with metal visibly inside him. Twisted around him, a demonic mask, its jaw hung open, and it had a horn on its head. I had never seen a man, no, a monster, as terrifying as him. I was frozen. He walked up to me and lodged a hook into my lower back. He dragged me through broken glass and twisted metal. Before I knew it, I was in some kind of underground workshop. There was a corpse of a much smaller scrap demon in the corner. Oh, I don't know why, but it let me crawl away. Well, I'll never walk again, but even if I could, I'll never go exploring abandoned places again. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams. Bye-bye.